right, so apparently I failed to read my own slides because everything we just covered is pretty much the balance of this uh, lesson here where we talk about the closing pro process and here is the listing broker and these are a couple of the ideas that we mentioned once before. Remember scheduling the closing? Once again, that kind of depends on who ordered the title work. Reading your clients, including reminding them to bring things like their ID, keys, garage doors, remotes, anything like that. Confirming the closing disclosure when we get it to make sure everything's correct. Uh, most notably, four or five things. The sales price, your commission, things of that nature that are very obvious. It's going to be kind of hard. Uh, you've got an idea of what the taxes should be based upon you know that they're paid two times a year. So you can confirm that CD and then look it over and then send it to the client so that they uh, can see it and then you will be able to go through it with them. All right. On the buyer side or the seller broker, same thing. Remember, you've got walkthrough issues. Um, when do you go to the walkthrough? I would suggest you go to the walkthrough early, uh, and what I mean early in the morning, so that you can close that afternoon. You don't want to get a whole bunch of time between your walkthrough and the final closing. Certainly if they haven't moved out yet, so if you're taking post-closing possession, um, you can't do a final walkthrough because they haven't moved out yet. Um, once again, if you forgot what post-closing possession is, uh, that is one of the things that I always say is a bad idea because that is detrimental, obviously, to the, to the buyer. Um, it helps a lot better for the seller than it would for the buyer. All right. Um, the Good Funds Law of 2009. The Good Funds Law, remember, states that if there's more than $10,000 going into the closing, your client has to wire that money in. So there are wire issues that you need to understand, and that is potential for, as you all remember, the fraud. So be careful when you get an email and you are trying to confirm the wiring numbers. I always call the title company and then ask them what number you gave. This is another slight trick and what I mean by that is when you call the title company and go, hey, I got your wire numbers, are they one, two, three, four? There could be a chance that that person didn't pay attention to what you just said, only heard the last number and went, yeah. So typically what I do is like, hey, I got your wire numbers. Can you confirm the number for me? And let them tell you one, two, three, four, okay, it matches. All right, so that's something I, I, I do is I don't give them the number. I let them tell me over the so I can see it now, then you've got to communicate that obviously to your client and you can do it one of two ways. One of the things I like to do is I give one number to one buyer and I give the other number, you know, you got the routing number and the account number and say, Hey, you guys need to talk to each other so that, uh, you can put the two numbers together. Okay. Or you could literally call them. I know an agent that goes over and visits them. Um, kind of dependent upon the customer service. Maybe you only have one buyer. You know, that's always a, that may be a case where you don't have a second buyer, so you've got to do that. So just watch out for that. You've got to ready your clients once again, same kind of concept. And don't forget the seller's disclosure because it's going to have to be re-signed at the closing. You've got title company or limited agency. Limited agency, just add the last two slides together and you can see that that number comes out to be twice as much work. Ta-da! How's that for math? Title company, <clears throat> initiate the final CD. That may not always be true. Sometimes it's the mortgage broker that's going to initiate that for you. They're going to collect all the information at the closing, including documentation from both buyers and sellers. They are the ones that's going to control the actual closing. Once again, if you've done your job correctly, that, that is a useless activity. And w with that COVID-19 stuff that was going on and we had some closings, they were doing the curbside. And if you've never got a chance to do that curbside closing, it was kind of unique. 
because one of the things that it did was showed you kind of how ineffective you are because we sat in one car and my client sat in the other car and you just kind of looked over and give them a thumbs up and smiled occasionally uh, because everything that they needed to know you had already talked about so there was not a lot of use there. I, I sat there and I remember I was giving a thumbs up to my buyer and I was kind of smiling and they actually called me from their car and said, you know, hey, it looks like you're having fun over there. What are you smiling about? And I couldn't really bring it to heart to tell them that I was smiling because I was getting paid and really doing nothing at that particular time. You know, I was playing that candy or fishdom on my phone and watching my buyers because you really are. Title company will also disperse the funds and they're, they're gonna be the ones responsible for all of the recording, okay? So that's their responsibility. <clears throat> Your lender, or we're gonna write in the word, if they had a mortgage broker, might be the same thing. The actual lender is gonna wire the funds and then with the COVID thing that came about was this verbal, and here's a case where verbal was better. They had a verbal VOE, that stands for verification of employment, because when all of those people were getting laid off or fired during that COVID uh, scenario, the lender was actually wanting a verbal verification of employment, and it had to be within 24 hours of the closing. Now, it got to be to the point where we started getting that verbal before the closing because here's what the rule was they were doing. If you went to the closing without the verbal VOE, they would go ahead and close, but they would not disperse any funds. And the word for that is a dry closing which sucks <clears throat> because that also means the t deed wasn't transferred. So there was really no transfer. And then they would get this verbal after the closing and they would call the agents and go, okay, we're ready to physically pass out all the documents. So what we started doing was having the uh, HR department the day before closing call the lender and give the verbal VOE so that when we went to the closing, they would actually pass out the funds right then, all right? So <clears throat> I still think they're doing that, so you might wanna be cognizant of that. So the closing process, make sure that all everybody has all the correct paperwork and there are things going back and forth. It can be kind of confusing. Uh, verify the closing disclosure, the purchase price. One of the important things I always tell jokingly, not a joke, Verify the commission. That's one of the things that should be checked on there to make sure that you're actually getting paid the way you want. And then also check with your documentation internally to see what you need to submit to your managing broker to get the paycheck. So if you've not closed anybody yet, which you probably should have by now because you're doing this within the first two years, hopefully you've had one closing. If you haven't, go out and shadow somebody. Ask one of your clients, fellow agents uh, in the company, hey, can I go to the closing with you? Just to kind of see what the process is, all right? Talk to your managing broker. Hey, what do you require from me? When do I have to have the documents turned in? When can I expect my check from you? Things of that nature. If you need to, create a closing list to verify all the tasks. Use that closing list as each document. You can make a master copy, print one off, put it in each one of your client's files. So then as you do things, you're like, oh yeah, I reminded them to bring their driver's license. I reminded them to bring the keys, things like that. You can also get a hold of your title rep who would be more than happy to come into you and explain their process on what they do and how they do it and show you what, hey, here's what we would expect from you as the listing agent. Here's what we would expect from you on the, as the selling agent, all right? So all of these things can be done so that you get an idea of what's going on in advance so that when you ha happen to do your first one, 
You don't end up looking a fool because you didn't take the right documentation, you didn't check on something, you didn't get the numbers wired over, your buyer didn't, forgot to bring money, whatever it is, all right? That's lesson six, the closing. We're gonna move on in this 30-hour post-licensing course here right away, hold on.